But the key thing to remember when you see a movie like tonight, and this is one of the most, I'd say it's the, it's the movie of the decade. It's, it's the most important movie of the decade. And the press asked 100 climate scientists to analyze the movie, to, look, to consider it science, to say, is Al Gore correct or not correct? Every single one of the scientists who've seen the movie could not fault it. They, they all said, yes, the science is spot on with this one. So that's an important piece to get out of the way. There's, in Europe, there is no debate about the science of global climate change. It's only in North America we're still debating it. And that is specifically because companies like Exxon have put millions of dollars into funding confusionist science to make us believe that oh, we don't know if it's true, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, therefore we don't need to do anything. And seeding editorials and newspapers, which are also preaching the same rubbish. One of the things that the sayings I've been using recently is there are really only two problems in the world. The one is the sum total of all our social, environmental, economic, etc. problems. The second is the belief that we cannot solve them. If you believe we can't solve these problems, you're then part of the problem. And when you see a movie like tonight, it's very easy to become really daunted and intimidated and feel, oh my god. And also, the solutions that Al Gore brings up, they only roll during the credits. So he, most people seeing it, they're walking out during the credits and missing the tiny bit that he does talk about on solutions. And so, hopefully you're all going to be staying during the credits, and then afterwards we're going to have a discussion talking about some of the more solid solutions. Such as, I mean, stop doing the bad stuff for a start, like BC Hydro and BC Ministry of Energy, stop planning to burn coal to generate energy, for God's sake. <laughs> it's hard to believe how embarrassing it is to be in a province when other countries around the world are planning ways to close down their coal mines, even China is planning to close its coal mines, and we're planning to open them. And I really believe that our current Minister of Energy, Richard Neufeld, does not believe in the science of climate change. And I've got a letter writing campaign going on at the moment through my newsletter, Econ News, which is outside that, to write to Richard Neufeld and ask him, do you accept the science of climate change as the world scientists say it, or are you a climate skeptic? Because we need to come, we need to know if our Ministry of Energy is on target with this or not. Because one of other things, he's rewriting our province's energy plan to decide if the future is going to be wind or coal without consulting anyone. As of how many of you knew that the province is rewriting its energy plan? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, that's not enough. It's not what I call democratic. We need to know that there are, there are so many solutions we can get a hold of. On a personal level, you can join the BC Sustainable Energy Association and get involved in the organizing politically. We're outside of the booth there. There's a chapter in Victoria. Meets next Monday at the Cafe Fantastico on Kings Road at 7 o'clock. You can go to the booth for the um, City Green, where there are grants up to $1,500 available to retrofit your home to make it more energy efficient. You can join the Car Share Cooperative. They've got a booth out there as well. So instead of having to own a car, you can be part of a community ownership of vehicles. You have the vehicle when you need it, but you're not using it full time. And you can join the Sierra Club, or ex in, not just in the climate change front, but also on sustainable fisheries, sustainable forestries, or all the other issues that are really tied into the same issue. You can, if, you, if you're running your home on, on oil, you can actually sign up with a new biodiesel project that Columbia Fields are doing. And Kay Shadowbay is getting information out about that, so you can get a percentage of your home heating oil from biodiesel. You can elect members of parliament who support this issue. Oh, wait a minute. We did that already. <laughs> you can re elect <laughs> comes up. And we, need, we really need to elect city councillors who, who reflect these views. I was talking to Sonia Chandler the other day, and she says the trouble at City Hall in Victoria is that there are so many opportunities going to waste because they haven't got the resources or the time or the energy to work on this stuff. We need to see thoroughly brief for running for City Council. So that we have a majority on City Council is working with a vibrant, strong vision to make Victoria the greenest city in the whole of Canada. <laughs> and actually, Vancouver has already set out to become such a city. We gonna let Vancouver pick us to the post? Hey folks, come on. <laughs> We've got work to do to get engaged with all that sort of stuff. David Corton, one of the world's greatest writers around 
thinking about the big picture stuff around sustainability and corporate rule and overall, overall development is coming to Victoria next month, sponsored by the, bank, the, the, um, the Values Based Business Network. And so they're giving out cars to find how David Corson is offering the same challenge to make Victoria one of the greener cities that models what sustainability is like for the whole future. We can generate enough energy from solar, wind, and tides and use it to power electric vehicles. We can, do, we can solve all our problems with sustainable energy. We just have to have the confidence to know that this is possible. The whole age of fossil fuels will only last 200 years. 1850 to 2050, then it's finished. If you're a historian in the year 1,000 years ahead, you'll do classes and teach about the age of fossil fuels and how it lasted 200 years, and then it was over. And you'll describe how humans faced a choice of clinging on to their comfort zones and their laziness and suffering an enormous global meltdown or to embrace a new energy revolution, a new revolution of sustainable living, sustainable agriculture, sustainable forestry, zero carbon emissions, and a future in harmony with the planet, not in an arrogant disregard for bullying the planet to meet our needs, which is what we're doing at the moment. In the World Urban Forum, it was stated over and over, if everyone in the planet lived at our current level of consumption, we'd need four planets to sustain the world's population. It can't be done, we have to change. So I now want to finish the world, the world premiere of a little poem I wrote. <laughs> Awake! Our house is on fire and people are sleeping drugged into a mind haze by the constant slow dripping of desperate housewives and foggy night in Canada. <laughs> Awake! Danger is creeping into the lives of our children. What did you do, they will ask, to stop this meltdown, this planet storm that is threatening to burn our future? Awake! The polar bears have no vote for the politicians who might yet save them from the eternity of silence that the is about to pass. Elephants have no vote for the leaders who might yet prevent their grasslands from flying into the desert and dry dead bones on the plains of Africa. Awake, the birds have no vote for the business leaders whose decisions might yet save their nesting sites from being drowned, dried up, or burnt by forest fires. The children of Bangladesh, whose farms will be swept into the sea, have no way to speak to the parent, teacher, or city councillor whose actions might yet make a difference. Why would we not choose sun, wind, tides, and electric vehicles over the chaos and meltdown that ride in the coattails of fossil fuels? Why would we not choose fresh organic food, locally grown, over dull cardboard square berries that trail carbon pollution all the way from California? Awake, do not linger in these dangerous times. Set sail on a new course. The future is beckoning, rich with the fruits of a sustainable world. Awake. Thank you. Thank you, Guy. I expected good ideas. We got them. So I didn't expect poetry. So thank you for that. So the movie starts, enjoy, and uh, we'll, we'll take the time after the movie to share some ideas so that we are awake and, and can tell our kids what we did to stop this, okay?